I came to tell somebody there is nothing good in sin. If there was something good in sin, God would leave you in it. Sin feels good. There are pleasures, the Bible says, in sin. But have you ever noticed what comes after the pleasure? There's a paycheck. The wages of sin, the paycheck of sin is death. No matter how many times Satan tries to deceive you, here's a truth you can count on. The only good life is the God life. Hello and welcome to Destined for Victory with Pastor Paul Shepard. Well, when you come to faith in Christ, God may ask you to give up a few things, a bad habit, a bad relationship, an unhealthy attachment to the things of this world. Today, Pastor Paul tells you why a relationship with God is well worth the sacrifice. Remember to come see us at PastorPaul.net to hear any recent message on demand, including today's. That's PastorPaul.net. Now be sure to subscribe to the Destined for Victory podcast at Spotify, at Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, here's Pastor Paul. He's Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California, with today's Destined for Victory message, It Will Be So Worth It. I want to start at Mark 10, verse 29. If you have a Bible, go there with me. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 29, and we'll also look at 30. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. That's the punchline. If you give up these things for my sake and the kingdom, Jesus said, you will receive a hundredfold the same things. You're going to receive them with persecutions And then at the end of it all, you're going to experience eternal life. So I'm going to talk to you about the fact that if we will learn to live a life of complete surrender to God, we can expect that the promise Jesus just made will apply to our lives. He says, I'm going to call you to give up some things for my sake in the kingdom. But as you do it, you can expect to receive a hundredfold the same types of things. You're going to have persecution with it. But at the end of it all, you will be blessed with the gift of eternal life. So I just want to let you know you got some stuff coming. In fact, I've entitled this message, It Will Be So Worth It. I came to tell you. It will be so worth it. What is the it? It is your surrendering your life completely into the hands of God. I want to let you know, if you do what Jesus says to this young man, it will be so worth it. It would have been worth it in his life had he said yes to the Lord. And it will be worth it in your life if you say yes to the Lord. I came to tell you that surrendering to Jesus might feel scary to the flesh, but it is the best way you and I can possibly live our lives. I want to let you know that a lot of churches have done us wrong when they have talked about coming to Jesus and being a follower of Christ as a mere result of you praying a quick prayer. There are a lot of folk who make you think if you want to pray a quick prayer, we sometimes call it the sinner's prayer, and ask Jesus into your heart that that will entitle you to all kinds of things. I came to tell you that's not what Jesus himself said. Jesus didn't promise you all of this if you pray a prayer. He said, if you give me everything, if you surrender completely to me, 
If you say yes from your very heart about everything I ask of you, you can experience the very best that I have. He refers to it here as a hundredfold all the things that I'm asking you to give up, to surrender to my will for my sake, he says, and for the sake of the kingdom of God. If you surrender, you can expect to receive all kinds of blessings. I'm here to tell you that the Lord is in the blessing business and he has all kinds of things for you. Getting saved and being a follower of Christ is an upgrade. It is an upgrade like you could not imagine outside of Christ. Talk about an upgrade. Giving your life to Jesus is an upgrade. It is making things far better. I want to say that because I want to defy what the devil has told you. That getting saved and becoming a follower of Christ is really going to mess up your life. That's why there's some people who think, you know, I maybe I'll get saved one day, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to live my life first. Do you know you're under deception? When you can say something like, I want to live my life, and then just before I'm so old, I can't do nothing else, then I'm going to try to quickly get saved so I can punch my, my heaven ticket. You are deceived, my friend, because that's not biblical followership at all. You don't come to Jesus because you've eked all of the sin you can possibly eek out of your days. And the devil will tell you that's the good life. And I got to give up the good life so I can get saved. No, no. The good life is the life of surrender to Jesus Christ. The good life is the life where you say yes to him, no to the flesh, no to the devil, because the flesh and the devil will take you down the road of destruction. I came to tell somebody, there is nothing good in sin. If there was something good in sin, God would leave you in it. Sin is not a good life. Sin feels good. There are pleasures, the Bible says, in sin. But have you ever noticed what comes after the pleasure? There's a paycheck. The wages of sin, the paycheck of sin is death. Sometimes it's natural death, but all the time it's spiritual death. It is the destruction of things that are good. And there is nothing good and godly about living in sin. The Bible says the good life, the high quality life, the HQ life is the life wherein God gives you righteousness, peace, and joy. Where God gives you purpose and fulfillment. Where you have peace in your heart and joy in your life. Where you don't have to be outside of God's will to enjoy your life. In fact, you realize that that is deception that is taking you down the wrong road. I came to tell the devil he is a liar. Look at what he said back in the beginning. He said to Eve, now let's look at this tree. Why is God telling you you can't eat from this tree? You know he's trying to hold you back, don't you? You know he's trying to cut off your joy. He want to always put his thumb on your happiness. Let's talk about this tree. Uh, Let me tell you, the real reason you ought to eat from this tree is because God knows the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You will become like him. You won't have to answer to him. You will be like him. And he beguiled Eve to the point where she listened to those lies. Have you ever listened to lies that sounded good? Now, I need you to take a few minutes and just be honest with yourself. Have you ever run into somebody who has the gift of lying? There are people who have the gift. They can make a lie sound so good. And the devil is the father of lies. So you know he's the best liar there's ever been. And he made this deception sound so good and told her the day you eat of this, God said you would die. Forget that. When you eat this, you'll really be alive because you'll in fact be able to know everything and you'll be able to make your own decisions and you won't have to answer to him. So don't let him hold you back, Eve. He's trying to keep you from being every woman. Because Eve, you are the original every woman. It's all in you. 
Long before Chaka Khan come along and sing it. Long before Whitney Houston pick it up and sing it. You are every woman, Eve. And you need to just go on and, and live your life. And the more he talked, the more it sounded good. And the Bible says she ate. Y'all call it an apple. The Bible didn't call it an apple. It said fruit. We don't know what the fruit was. But y'all call it whatever you want. It's fruit. She ate it. And the saddest verse in all of your Bible is the next one. And she gave to her husband who was with her. Standing right there. Hadn't that been a problem forever? Spiritually passive men need to be spiritually alert, spiritually on point, spiritually vigilant, ready to take on the devil. Men who ought to be standing at the door of the home when the devil come with his lying package trying to give a delivery. The man's supposed to be there. You got macho. That's the time for your macho to kick in. You see the devil's delivery truck pull up in your driveway. You supposed to step up. No, baby, I got this. Go to the door. Devil, ring the door. I got a package for y'all. Man's supposed to be standing there. What's up? What's, what's, what's this? Where this come from? Who sent that? Well, devil, devil was slick. He didn't put his, his return address on it. Well, I don't take stuff. I don't know where it comes from. Oh, I'm preaching already. Y'all waiting me. I'm going to get to this. But y'all got to stop taking stuff and you don't even know where it came from. You don't even know where it's coming. You just, somebody sent me something. Come on. You got to know who's sending you something. You got to be vigilant. Just like I do as a pastor. I don't read everything coming in the office. Because there have been over the decades of pastoring. There have been folk who want to shoot at me from the dark. They are spiritual, emotional snipers. They will put either a phony name and address for the return or they'll put nothing there and they think I'm stupid enough to open it up and let them fill me with the garbage, the toxic message that they have. My staff knows you don't put a letter in front of me. Y'all remember the old-fashioned way? You couldn't give the general food from somewhere. He didn't know where that came from. So there was somebody who ate it. Look, I'm a general in God's army. You can't just hand me letters from folk trying to shoot at me. The devil's after me. And so my staff know, you look at it, if it's suspicious, you read enough to figure out whether this is a legitimate message or not. If it's not legitimate, I don't need to hear about it or see it. Straight in the trash. Amen. But in the early days when I was my own secretary and had to open up everything, you know, I first got to California, I was the secretary. I was the receptionist. Hello, may I help you? I'm calling for the pastor. Is he there? Yes, hold on. I put you on hold. I get back on. Hello. <laughs> That's the way you start out in ministry. You can't be cute when you're just starting out. But now that I got other folk to do it, y'all answer the phone. Y'all pick it up. Y'all read it. I'll pray your protection. And they get mad because they've all experienced, I don't believe what they said. I don't believe what they wrote. I don't believe. I know, but that's part of why you get paid. You just got to take it. You just got to stomach it in Jesus' name. Because there's some hateful folk out here. And the devil is at the bottom of it all. And so we need to learn how to handle messages from the enemy. Don't receive that in. God has a good plan for you. So don't let the devil mess it up. So in your life, when the devil comes around to tell you that you need to be doing this or that or the other out there, don't worry about what the church say. They blame it on the church. The church doesn't define doctrine. God gave us his manual, the word of God. Don't ask me to love you and lie to you. I heard that you are positive. Yes, I preach a positive message. And the positive message includes you need to stay away from sin because sin will take you down. And so we have to be faithful and true to the word of God. And so I want to let you know the best life is the life of compliance with the will of God. 
In that you will find righteousness, peace, and joy, and all the things you need. Purpose is found in the mind of God. Your fulfillment is found in the mind of God. Everything the devil says is good, he's a liar. It might feel good, but how many know everything that feels good doesn't have a good result? See, they used to say back when I was young, back in the 70s and stuff, people would say dumb things like, if it feels good, do it. All us old heads have heard stuff like that when we was coming along. If it feels good, are you out of your mind? Do you know how much stuff feels good that you better run as far and as fast away from as you possibly can? Not everything that feels good you ought to do. Some things feels good, so don't do it. It feels good, so you know it's a trap. The wages of sin, they might have a a pleasurable moment, but the wages of sin is death. So it is a gift of God when he gives us eternal life. And so we need to understand, obeying God gives us a promise. He says, if you obey me, I got blessings that he describes as a hundredfold that I want to bring into your life. Now, with that premise, I want to take you back and walk you through this passage. So go with me now back up to verse 17, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Because we're going to learn what it is you have to do to experience what I'm describing as that which it will be so worth it. Verse 17 of Mark's gospel, chapter 10. Now, as Jesus was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. Pause right there. First of all, look at this encounter. Look at the fact that an impressive person approaches Jesus in an impressive way. Why do you say this guy's impressive? Because in the three different synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we get from each of them a piece of information about the young man that causes me to describe him as impressive. Matthew's gospel tells us he's young. Luke's gospel calls him a ruler. And all three synoptic gospels refer to him as wealthy. So thus, We commonly hear about him. He is a rich, young ruler. How is that for impressive? Rich, young, in charge. How's that for your social media profile? I'm rich. I'm young. I'm a baller. Come on. Yo, come on into the 21st century. Come on into urban vernacular. Rich young ruler or rich young baller. Rich young in charge. How impressive is that? How is that for people living a fantasy life? What do we value more than being young? You got folk who old still calling themselves young. Let me prove it. How many folk are young that are listening to this message right now? Raise your hand if you're young. Look around. Do you see the deception? (laughs) Now, see, some of the smarter folk, I saw some of my age that said, Pastor, I ain't falling for that. I'm not falling for that. I'm so glad they've learned what I had to learn. I fought for my youth as long as I could. I kept calling myself young as long as I could. After a while, I had to give it up. Here's what I say now. I'm young at heart. Oh, that's what I say now. I'm young at heart. That you can't take from me. I'm going to be an old man trying to say, I'm, but I'm young at heart. Hallelujah. Y'all might have to help me walk, but I'm young at heart. (laughs) I found out, I remember that all of my dreams, when I got old enough to reflect back on it, I realized that all of my dreams as a young man were young man's dreams. 
I didn't know it for a long time. Everything I dreamed about in my teens, when I envisioned my life, I never saw me old. I'm just being honest. Now, maybe y'all had had a big enough vision. You saw yourself old. Good for you. I never did. It's not that I denied that I will get old. I just never thought about it. Because when you're in your teens, what you think about is your 20s. When you're in your 20s, you think about your 30s. And you think all of your goals are going to be accomplished. I'm going to have this degree by this. I'm going to get married by this. I'm going to have this much money. I'm going to buy my first house. I'm going to buy my first luxury car. I'm going And you do all of that. And for me, all of that stuff was I envisioned myself young. So when I hit 30, I, was, I still had some dreams ahead of me. Okay, I'm, man, I'm there. And then when I hit 40, I started feeling a little trauma. Because I started realizing, wait a minute, I never, I never thought all the way up here. Because by the time I was 40, I was nine years in California. And I was still fulfilling a dream God had given me about my career of pastoring. And so I was in that. And so, okay, I, I'm not crazy about 40. But then I start trying to say, but that's right. People say life begins at 40. So, okay, so I start trying to tell myself, okay, so the people said it's going to begin now. All right, so it's really going to take off. So I tried to encourage myself through my 40s. And then I saw myself heading toward 50. And I said, I don't have a frame of reference for this. I never saw myself at 50. I never envisioned myself at 50. What am I supposed to do with 50? I tried to rebuke the devil. It wasn't the devil. Next thing I know, I'm having my 50th birthday. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Because I don't have a vision. I start saying, Lord, give me a vision. Because I never saw this far. Thanks for spending part of your busy Friday here with us on Destined for Victory. Always great to have you with us. You know, as believers in Christ, we're asked to do some things that often seem impossible. We're told to consider it joy when we go through hard times. We're told to persevere through life's biggest challenges. We're encouraged to view the trials of life as an opportunity for growth and for greater intimacy with God. Well, how do we go about that? Find out by requesting Pastor Paul Shepard's latest booklet, The Cost of Surrender. That's The Cost of Surrender, an important resource from Pastor Paul and our gift to you today by request for your generous gift to Destined for Victory. Call 855-339-5500 to make your gift over the phone or visit PastorPaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. You can also mail your gift to Destined for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble. And if you're having trouble today, the Destined for Victory ministry team wants to pray for you. Log on to PastorPaul.net. Use the contact feature to share your prayer request with us. While you're there, be sure to scroll down to the bottom of the homepage to request Pastor Paul's monthly letter of encouragement, which comes at no cost or obligation. Imagine that, rich, young, in charge. That's who comes to Jesus. He's rich, he's young, he's a baller. That's what his Instagram says, his Facebook says, his Twitter says. Just a picture with him grinning, rich, young, baller. So he comes to Jesus and an impressive man, rich young ruler, comes to Jesus in what I consider a very impressive way. He runs to Jesus. He ran to Jesus, but ultimately he walked away. His story comes your way next time in Pastor Paul Shepard's message, It Will Be So Worth It. Until then, though, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.